Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Museum Madness. I know it's been quite a while, I've been incredibly insanely busy, both with work and with school. But I'm back now, and it's time to go back into the museum and look at our next set of exhibits. You see, where did we leave off here? Ah yes, the solar system. Let's go ahead and jump right in, shall we? This says the solar system, but really all this is is teaching you about latitude, longitude, and how to navigate in the night sky via telescope. So the stars in the projection dome aren't matching the ones on the star atlas settings. So we have an hour to solve this. This is not that difficult of a challenge, so uh, I don't think it's going to take an hour. Let's see what Mick has to say. So the projector is broken, and five stars are out of alignment of where they should be, and because of that contradiction. The system is overloaded and we have to fix it before it erases itself and all the data is lost. So this isn't as hard as it sounds. Basically what we have to do is we have to look at the twinkling star using one of our four examination devices and then use the star atlas to figure out which star it is and then move it back to its proper date and location in the... Uh, night sky to match the star atlas. So let's see. Let's look at it using this one first. I have this just a traditional telescope. And that's what the star looks like through a telescope. Sort of a cloud or nebula, I suppose you could say. And we've got a few other tools here. Let's take a look at this one. A radio antenna I believe or uh, I don't know exactly what it is but viewed that way the star looks like that let's go ahead and uh, click at the star atlas and figure out where this star is supposed to go okay so this is what the planetarium is supposed to look like from here we can the larger stars that you see here 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 and here are the ones that we have to move. You can We have to click on them, figure out which one is the one that matches the one that we are using currently, and look up its relevant data. So that's not it. It doesn't look uh, the same with the visual, li visual light or the radio waves. So let's go ahead and check here. This is it. So the visible light and the radio waves both match as well. We can also check its infrared reading and its spectrum reading, like, like spectrum reading, but those aren't necessary. You usually only have to look at one of them because each star is unique. So we have to move this one to a height of 40, a uh, V vector, I believe, of 260, and then 82691. So 826, whoops, 91. And then the vector was 40, I believe. Let me double check that real quick. Height, no, the height was 40. Yeah, height 40, vector 260, okay. You just hold the button down, let it scroll to where it should be. You can see the stars moving bit by bit across the sky to where it should be. Now the reason we need to set the date as well as the height and the vector is because the date also affects w exactly where it is in the night sky. For Obviously, stars will be different depending on what year it is because the Earth and the stars are moving uh, relative to each other in, this, in the galaxy. So it's a, this is actually fairly complicated problems for a uh, kid's grade school level game. Hit project. That means we got it back where it goes. The kid makes lame jokes about little green men, and another star has appeared. So now we've got to figure out where this star is supposed to go. Let's take a look at our atlas. Oh, no. 
We're gonna need to check exactly what the star looks like before we can check the atlas. Let's see, what does it look like through our telescope? A little spread out with a yellow star in the center. Let's check the radio. So it's a little nebulous thing, kind of blobby. They all kind of look the same through the radio. The difference is going to be in the shapes. Let's take a look at our atlas and see what we've got. Um, we'll check these ones over here. Usually it's going to be fairly close, but not exact. Okay, that's n definitely not it. Um, how about this one? Nope, that's not it either. Is it this one? Yep. So it's all the way over on the other side. Okay. So 1, 5, 1948, and 20, 145. Okay. So 1. You can see it's moving uh, depending on the month and the day as well as the year as I'm adjusting it. So 1, 5, 148, 1948. Okay, and then we're looking, we need to get the height and the vector again, because I forgot. 20, 145. So way the heck down. Yeah, but they, the 60 minute quote unquote time limit that they give you is a ridiculous amount of time for this. If that is a time limit at all, I've honestly never taken that long to actually do this, even on, even when I was initially doing this, like when I was a very, very young. So, yeah. Then again, I was a kid who was obsessed with astrology, so it wouldn't surprise me if I'm, I was a bit of a child prodigy at this. 145. There we go. Check with another one for the good guys. Well, then who's the bad guy, kid? Who's the bad guy? So the other one is way the heck up here. Let's take a look at it. What do we got? Okay, this is a larger, massive nebula, nebula. There isn't really a bright core as far as I can see. What does that look like through the radio? Just a massive nebula. Let's take a look. I think I know which one that is already. Just going by process of elimination, we already looked at those two, and it doesn't look like either one of those. I think it's this one down here. No? That's the first one we did, right? Yeah, I think so. That's not it. Hmm. Here? No? Here we go. Alright, so... 11, 19, 71. 3, 30, 50. So 11, 19, whoops, 71, and 30, you go, 330, 50. So 50. And 3.30. At least the music here is pretty groovy. Like I mentioned in the previous part, most of the music in this game is reused several times, but it always is slightly mixed differently, so it never gets completely repetitive unless you spend too much time in the... Uh, connected exhibits. It's not that bad. It could be a lot worse. There we go. Okay, and then we have this bad boy right here. So we only have two more stars left to put up. Let's take a look at what we've got. So this is the shi this is the extra shiny one. Okay, yeah. So this one should be relatively close to where that is. I think it's up this one up here, right? Yeah. So 3886 24020. 240 
This will be 20. Slowly working our way up towards the top of the exhibit. I wish there was a faster way to make this scroll just like entering the numbers on your keyboard or something like that. There's not. You have to manual you have to hold down the the uh, mouse button to be able to scroll through them quickly. It's kinda like one of those old fashioned clocks. Go twenty. I believe it's three, eight. Eighty six, yes. Let me double check that. Three eight eighty six two forty twenty, yes. Okay. And this will be our last one. Let's take a look. Okay, this is the really bright one. This is probably a red dwarf star. I could make a joke about a British sitcom, but I'm not going to. I'm above that. Okay, it's this one right here in the center. So this is 120, 85, 5, 14, 88. So 120, 85, 5, 14, 88. Let's see. 85. 5. 88. This is 14. Then this. I just need to get the height, I think. Double check that. 514, 88, 120, 85. So 120. This should put it pretty much dead center. Of course, the star atlas and the projection don't match quite exactly because one of them's on a rounded surface and one of them's not so they're not going to line up perfectly 120 85 1488 yep and that's it honestly this is one of the more complex exhibits but we're going to run into some ones that are pretty much just about the same uh shortly go. Let's go back to the exhibits and take a look and see what we got next. Rockets and computers. Let's go. Alright, so this is another one of those shuffle puzzles like what we had in Pollution. This exhibit actually has some of my favorite music in the game, so I'm just going to kind of sit here and enjoy it while we get the puzzle solved. So yeah, this is basically just about the history of rockets, so this isn't that difficult. It's just a, it's just a shuffle puzzle. It's not that hard. It's the same as the one that we did before in the uh, exhibit on power sources. See? You just get the different slots matched up to do each different side and then use the buttons on the bottom to switch until they match. So we need to look for the Chinese rockets. Chinese rockets are also known as fireworks because the Chinese were the first civilization to build rockets because they were the first ones to invent gunpowder. Okay, and then liquid fuel rockets were the next stage. Let me see, we'll get this uh... picked out here. Whoops. I had it, and then I switched it. You see, liquid fuel rockets, I believe, are... We were talking about the V2, the German V2 from World War II. Perhaps I'm wrong. Info. Ah, oh, no, see there, that's the picture we're looking for. Okay, yeah, because this is, uh...
That makes sense, because the, the V2 came later on. The liquid fuel rockets, the multi-stage liquid fuel rockets, are the first quote-unquote modern rockets. But they were earlier than the German ones, they just weren't as prevalent because they were very expensive and crashed most of the time. So Von Braun's, we're looking for the V2. Being a World War II nut, as I am, that was practically my major in college. I know all about the V2. I'm sure any of you guys out there who care at all about World War II probably know about the V2. It's the German secret weapon. They launched some of them at London, but not all of them reached it. It could travel 200 miles, and it was pretty much the best rocket up to that time. But it wasn't perfect, and the German scientists who built it wound up coming to America because they didn't want the Russians, to, they didn't want to wind up in communist Russia, so they wound up coming to America to work on their rockets, and they wound up making the modern space shuttle. Or at least the initial versions of what would eventually become the mo modern space shuttle. Or rather, the rocket boosters on side of the modern space shuttle. And that's it. We've got the four main stages in the history of rockets. And here the kid makes a Terminator reference. Because we all know that the kids know who the Terminator is. Yeah, exactly. Let's go ahead and move on to the next part of the exhibit. Space Shuttle Launch Control Room. Seems to be working fine, but of course there's problems. The automatic launch sequence is aborted. We have to manually override what's going on in here. So we have, again, 60 minutes just like the last exhibit hall to solve this problem. So let's talk to Mick and figure out what's going on. This is another one of those really complex ones. So this is a computer simulation of a shuttle launch to an orbiting space station. We have to launch the shuttle at the correct angle so it'll rendezvous with the space station. If they don't meet within 60 minutes, the computer system will overload and the game will be over. This is actually very tricky if you don't know exactly what to do. Launch control panel or video game? What video games have you been playing, kid? So yeah. This right here will change your launch angle. And then you press Launch Shuttle to launch the shuttle. Basically, this whole thing is trial and error. And here's your timer up in the corner. So you just hit Launch Shuttle, and then when it reaches the, de the degree angle, it'll automatically fly off into space. So what you want to do is basically, it's trial and like I said, it's trial and error. You just find an angle that you think might work good, click it, and let it go. Because you have to keep the angle of the shuttle, the angle of the Earth, and the angle of the space station all in mind. It's trickier than it looks, but again, you have unlimited retries and 60 minutes, so it's basically just trial and error figuring out which one is where you're supposed to go. So we're getting closer. Let's try this. 270. There we go. We have solved the problem. So that wasn't so hard. Though I really don't know exactly what that's supposed to be teaching you. Aside from just keep trying something until, until one of it works. But, you know, whatever. Now this one. This is the Explorer Probe, a deep space probe. It's lost in the asteroid belt, obviously it's just a simulation, but keep in mind, the game forgets that it's a simulation all the time. So we have to do something and fix the auto-fire sequence. Mick, tell us more. 
so the probe's rockets have to be programmed to allow it to fly through the asteroid belt. The computer program usually does it, but the virus destroyed the program, and now we have to fix it. And again, if we get this wrong, we have to leave the exhibit and come back. Alright, so... We have our four rockets. Vector 1, 2, 3, 4. The rockets fire in the direction of the arrows, which propel us in the opposite direction. And you don't stop. This, this exhibit teaches you three things. Programming, i.e. putting in a sequence of events to all be follow, carried out in sequence. That's basic programming. Two, tr again, trial and error. Three, conservation of momentum. Watch. Okay, so seven steps. Let's just do three, three. Three, um, three, 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 and then we'll throw in a couple of twos for good measure. And I want to show you guys what happens, because you'd be thinking, initially looking at this, you can see it's a grid, and you can see the sequences that we've got. Okay, and you figure out... Okay, so the left arrow, number three here, is going to fire me off to the right. So I need to move right, let's say, three spaces, and then we'll fire a two to make us go up. Right? Well, watch. Yeah. So... This isn't how many spaces you move, this is how many times the rocket fires and how fast you wind up going in a given direction. So what you want to do is you're going to fire the rocket going to that direction twice, and then fire one going in the opposite direction to slow yourself down, and then fire your, ve your vector rockets to go up. Okay, we're going to fire the ones here, so we're going to go to the right twice, and then go to left once to slow ourselves down, and then go up, and then go by firing off the rockets here, and then we're going to slow ourselves down here, and hopefully get ourselves going at a diagonal angle. So we're going to fire the three again. This is trial and error, but we only have ten tries, unlike the last one. So basically, each exhibit is kind of building off of each other to be able to reach what we're trying to do. So, let's fire... Um, oh, let me see, we need to... We'll do this. Two, three, two. We can only try and see if it works. Nope. Alright. So we're gonna need another four here, and then two to do, and then oh, let me see here gonna want to switch one of these out for one of these because the goal my, my, the best, easiest way to do this is to send it up at a diagonal angle right through here but that's trickier than it sounds because they, since the rockets fire in sequence and not simultaneously, it's kind of hard to get it, get them both going at the same rate at the same time. And otherwise, you just go careening off to one of the sides here. Let's try that. All right, that didn't work. Really, it's going to be dumb luck, at, at, you know, unless I can, re unless I really take the time to try to puzzle out exactly the sequence I need. Okay, that's not going to work. Again, this is trial and error more than anything else, so I could take the cautious route and just go around, but it's honestly trickier to maneuver that way. Okay, so we're going to hit the edge. Yep. Nope. Not quite. 
But you can see that this puzzle was clearly not programmed with children in mind. Okay, we need one more. So the thing about this puzzle is that there is no one set solution, and because it requires so many different learning factors, it really is too complex for a kid's game. Ah, I need to slow it down. Oops. It's our last try, gentlemen. If this doesn't work, I'm just going to cut back to my successful attempt, because I think I have to do most of the entire exhibit again, and I don't want to make y'all watch that, so... Yeah, this isn't going to work. Oops. Bingo. Alright, so when I initially did it, I didn't know that you could program blank sequences into it, but turns out you can, and that makes it pretty easy. All you have to do is get it going along this vector and let it sit there until it reaches here, fire it up one notch, and then it goes in. And each square corresponds to the space of one rocket. That's what they are, not necessarily distance that you'll thrust with the use of that rocket. Complicated, but doable. And probably the hardest puzzle in this game, honestly, if, if, you know, if I take into account all the other puzzles. So let's go back to the main hall. And we're finished. And I'll leave you guys off here as we get ready to tackle the last of the astronomy exhibits in the next part. Now, I'll see you guys next time, folks.